run it off our 6 volt supply. In this video we're going to be making this to replace this. I've been using my mini amp quite a lot recently and there's a video showing you guys how I made it and I made it to run off this 9 volt battery. I can buy all of these 1.5 volt batteries for less than the price of one of these. And I want it to be able to run off these type of batteries or these types of batteries. Best of both worlds. That was my dog in the background, by the way. This needs between 4 volts at a minimum and 12 volts at a maximum. And we've been using this battery and that's 9 volts. So if we were to use these, one of these would give us 1.5 volts. Two of them would give us 3 volts. If we use four of them, that would get us over the finish line and give us 6 volts, which is what I've decided to go for. And I'm not sure, but I'm hoping that these are going to last longer because these look like they take up more volume than this one. And these are kicking out about 6 volts, whereas this one is kicking out 9 volts. So I'm not sure, but hopefully they'll, they'll last longer. And they'll certainly be a lot cheaper. This 9 volt Duracell battery cost me £7, whereas I got 32 of these for only £2. So this is going to be a much cheaper option, however it turns out. Just for fun, I've connected our two battery packs up in parallel. Incidentally, if you don't know what a breadboard is or how it works, then I've done a video on that. And also, if you don't know how we've connected up our multimeter to our breadboard with these little devices, then I've done a video showing you guys how I made those as well. So just for fun, as I said, we've connected these two battery packs up in parallel. So I've got the black to black here and the red to red here. Sorry, red. And then we've connected them to our multimeter and we're reading 3 volts or 3.1, which is what we expected. In this configuration, you'd expect the battery life to be twice as long since we're using two packs and we're getting out the same voltage. We've just dealt with the parallel and this is the circuit for it and we can see it, it was kicking out at about 3 volts. This is our series circuit and you can see we have a positive side here of one of our batteries connected to a voltmeter and that is represented here. So there, that's the positive side that's connected into our voltmeter. And then we have, on the other side, our negative connected to the voltmeter, and that is represented just here. And that's our negative going into our voltmeter. And then, finally, we have just the negative and positive in the middle connected up, and that is just here connected. And that's kicking out 6.2, and I expected that because 3.1 was one battery pack, and then we expected it to double, so that's 6.2. So I just need to solder these two together. And then the two outer wires will provide the power for our circuit. I've just cut and stripped these two wires here, ready to solder them together. I've just put some heat shrink over my wire here. But if you don't have any, once you've soldered the two wires together, or you could twist them together, but I'm just going to solder them. Once you've finished, you could just put some electrical tape round or some glue gun, just something to insulate them so that you don't short the circuit. So we've connected this up and we're done. So you could just connect these two ends into your circuit and then it would work. Or you can connect this up to your wires here and then you can connect this as well or you can buy these really cheap or you can make your own and we've just um, taken these from a battery that we've taken apart so I've soldered my positive in here if you can see now I've done the negative hopefully you can see that and I'm going to be sticking this on to the top there this has turned out 10 times better than I expected it to. So I just glue gunned these two sides together. This is from the front of the battery, this is from the back. And then of course I've soldered it and I mean it's solid, it's, it's not going to break. And if I tug these wires, they're not gonna, it's not going to come undone. So I'm really impressed with that. And this is the bought one and you can see this is like really, this is really flimsy. You know, this is, it's not the best of quality. So I'd really recommend making your own. We've got our homemade 6 volt battery pack um, power source here. We've got that plugged into our breadboard and then into our multimeter and we're reading about 6.2 volts and that's, that's great. I've just got some audio coming in from GarageBand because I didn't want that. I couldn't play the guitar and um, do this at the same time. So we've got our old, well, our expensive 9 volt battery. So we'll test that out. Okay, now let's try out our new um, power source that we made. So let's connect that up now here. There we go. Okay, now let's see if it works. Great, it sounds exactly the same. So we could have our, let's turn it off. So we can use our 9 volt expensive battery or our cheap homemade power source. 
Here I have an original stylophone. Um, this is, uh, uh, as I said, original, and it's a lot older than I am. And so we've just plugged in our six volt power source that we made. So you see it's connected up here. So let's see if this will run off our six volts. Usually this needs nine volts to run. So let's see if we can run it off our six volt supply. So we just have a normal um, 9 volt battery plugged into our stylophone, but then we've connected that up to our homemade mini amp, and that's going to be powered by our homemade power source that we made today. So. This is our finished product and I've just blue tacked this together because I don't know what form I want it in so I might want it like that or like that so I'll just um, glue gun it when I've figured out how I want this to be and I hope you guys found that useful and if you like this video please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel have a good day bye